What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? I'm terrible. Thanks for asking. This week, we have a legit cluster of a project. Let me set the stage. It's a random evening. I'm bored. I'm all video game deaf. So I say to myself, I say self, let's make some shit. I have a couple of unfinished kits waiting in a box. Let's get to work. The millions and millions of Let's Make Shit fans are waiting for that next upload. And it started off great. It really did. I had some Pink Floyd massaging my ears, a cold drink, and fun to be had. As you can see, everything was here. 72 LEDs, 32 resistors, a couple of caps and transistors, and a switch. Can't forget the switch. The solder was flowing perfectly, even the no clean flux seemed to not be needing so much cleaning this time. Could this be the one? Is this one going to go so smoothly, I won't even get to make a video out of it? Just an easy night for once. Well, here we are. So we all know something's about to go down. Everyone hold on tight. This one's going to suck. Well, for me, you guys might get a kick out of it. So with that, let's get to making shit. And then, we're going to get to fixing shit. As always, here's what we're going to need. Ah, through-hole resistors. You gotta love them. Especially when you put the wrong ones in and they make that little puff of smoke. These first two are 47 kilo ohms. They're gonna work with the transistors. More on those later. The rest? They're 1K each, and they limit the current of the LEDs. Too much power, and they cook. So thank you, humble resistor. You make the world bright. Looks like each resistor is for multiple LEDs. Like they're working in banks? Has to be right right? Don't know for sure. This kit didn't even have a wiring diagram this time. Talk about cheap. I like to bend the LEDs out so they don't fall out when you flip over the board. Guess how I figured that out. Now, it's time to get our flux on. You know, I don't think I've ever talked about this soldering iron. You guys see it in almost every video, and like a deadbeat dad, I never bring it up. Sad. This is a TS-101 by Miniware, $79.99, and it's a handy fella. Super light, easy to grip, feels like an oversized pen. With the included DC's power supply, it puts out 65 watts. Or if you have a high wattage laptop charger or PT power supply, it will work with a USB cable and put out 90 watts. It heats up to a max temp of 750 degrees freedom height in like 15 seconds. So that's nice. Good product, highly recommend. Next up is what the instructions are calling a triode, but it's not 1947, so we know it's a transistor. In this application, they're working as switches. They're going to control the flashing of the LEDs. And, well, that's all I got to say about that. Next up are the LEDs. As usual, these are not marked, but as Pashka 4527 pointed out last video, the side with the flat spot is usually the negative. I believe in you, Pashka, but unfortunately, this is the Edir product. So on this PCB, both sides have what look to be flat spots. I'm going to hope that it's the pad that's a circle. That's how it is on their other PCBs. And also, one side is colored white, and I'm thinking it's like an electrolytic cap, and that the white side denotes negative. Would have been a hell of a lot easier to put a plus and a minus, but what do I know? Nextly, is that a word? Well, it is now. Nextly, we have two electrolytic caps. They work in conjunction with those two 47K resistors we installed before. So to try explaining this in layman's terms, the resistor controls how fast the caps charge. Once fully charged, they turn on the transistor. Voltage go bye-bye, transistor turn off. Cap recharge. It's a vicious cycle, but it creates a simple timing circuit. And lastly, we have the switch and the power barrel jack. I'm figuring these are self-explanatory. I mean, it's an on and off switch and a barrel jack. Not really much to explain. And we're done. Look at that, a little under three minutes. Nice. Well, I don't have a power supply for this, so I'll solder some leads to it. What are the odds that this thing works first try? Even if I wasn't recording this after the fact, I'd still say 9%. Would you look at that? Well, it almost works. Just a few LEDs out. At this point, I was thinking it's a bad resistor or joint. Each resistor controls multiple LEDs, so time to bust out the old multimeter. So I checked the resistors. I checked the LEDs. I even checked the transistors and the caps. 
What did I find? Nothing. Everything is working just as it should. Well, except that lone LED, but that was my fault. You'll see what I mean in about 22 seconds. For some reason, that row of LEDs was missing the negative. The whole row. Weird. So I'm going to save you guys the two hours of troubleshooting. One, because I felt stupid that it took me so long to find it. And two, ain't nobody got time for that. Or do they? Anyway, well, let's get to fixing shit. So here's what we're going to use to fix this garbage. Some never-before-seen items here. Exciting times. Do you see it? Do ya? Now that's what I call quality control right there. Look at what we have here. For real though, I wasn't even that annoyed. This was a good exercise in patience and fortitude of will. Just remember, look over everything. So to fix this, I'm going to use some 26 gauge enameled wire. That's just wire that has a coating on it. Usually used for motors and the like. I find the best way to get the coating off is to just burn it off. And then a little sandpaper. Usually works for me. So this one is easy. I'm just going to go in between the joints and make my own trace. Jesus, look at that tip. That thing is more cooked than MJ after a Pepsi commercial. Maybe it's time to clean it. Nah, that a boy's got some life in it yet. Don't forget to cut off the ends and check out the new with a multimeter. It would be a shame if you did all that work and it didn't take. The other one, did you see that one too? Somehow, I either burnt the pad off or it fell off. Either way, that one's on me. This one is a little more tricky. I'm going to have to scrape away some of the solder mask. Man, these tweezers have seen better days. They're as sharp as simple jack. Might as well clean the no clean flux while we're at it. A clean board is a happy board. This is a little harder than it looks, especially when the PCB is this cheap. Scrape too hard and you pull the trace off. Don't scrape hard enough, you get it. So while I have a little time here, I'd like to give a shout out to everyone that has subscribed. It's getting close to 200. It still kind of amazes me that people are watching my stuff. I said it before, and I'll say it again. I never really expected to get 10 subs. I only told those close to me about this channel, some family and a few friends. I make these videos mainly as something to kill time with. It takes a few hours to make one of these kits, but the videos, man, it's a time consumer. Days and days. Maybe if I just didn't play music while I was working on it, and talk to myself while doing it, it wouldn't take so much time. I think the way I do is better for what it's worth. I have some time to think things over and get all the anger from stupid shit like this repair out of my system. Otherwise, it would be one 10 minute long bleep. I think I have like four videos already recorded, ready to be edited and voiced. I really need to figure out how to get these done faster. And I want to move on from these kits. And actually make some shit. More stuff like the time video, where I make things from scratch. I have so many things I want to do. I'll figure it out, I guess. It's just tedious. Huh. <laughs> Funny enough. As I sit here making this video, I just got a new sub who left a nice comment. So now, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, I have purpose again. See, that's the stuff that keeps me going. Knowing someone out there is enjoying what I'm doing. It puts some spring in this old man's step. Who cares it's 1.52 on a Thursday morning? People want to watch some shit. And who am I to deny them? Well, with that done, let's cover these traces up with a little solder mask. So, solder mask. This stuff is kind of new to me. I've only used it once before. This is UV solder mask. You put it on. How much? I don't know. I guess till it looks like it's covered. Then you hit it with a UV light to cure it. The solder mask kit was $8.99, and the flashlight was $14.49, so not too bad. But as usual, no instructions. So like, how much do you use? How long do you hold the light on it? You know, things they should tell you. So anyway, I just did it for a minute, and then picked at it to see if it was hard. That's what she said! <laughs> then did it again for another minute. That seemed to finish it off. So look at that. That's a nice repair right there. If I do say so myself. It's like it's brand new. Brand new. So let's get this thing back on power. Amazingly, he did put in the instructions how many volts you need. So five volts later, and look at that. It kind of looks like a bell that's blowing in the wind. Kinda. What a productive three hours I just spent. Why is it that the worst kit so well? The worst. 
But honestly, I really wasn't that annoyed. Too much. Like I said, it was a good exercise in actual board repair. I was just more annoyed at myself that I missed it so many times. And that pad, I really don't know what happened. Even looking through the video, I, I can't see where it happened. Oh well, now I can say I fixed a broken pad and some traces. So go me. And with that, I'm out of here. Here's some B-roll, and as always, thanks for watching.